Spirit continue to have your way. Let your people see Jesus, feel Jesus, love Jesus as I get out of the way. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 We turn our attention to 1 Kings 18 chapter, beginning with the 20th verse through the 24th. And then we will skip over to 1 Kings 18, verses 36 through 39. And it reads, So Ahab sent to all the Israelites and assembled the prophets at Mount Hom. Elijah then came near to all the people and said, How long will you go limping with two different opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. Yes, yes. But if Baal, then follow him. The people did not answer him a word. And verse 36. At the time of the offering of the oblation. Yes, I do. The prophet Elijah came near and said, O Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel, that I am your servant, and that I have done all these things at your bidding. Yes, yes. Answer me, O Lord, answer me, so that your people will may know that you, O Lord, are God, and that you have turned their hearts back. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt offering, the wood, the stones, and the dust, and even licked up the water that was in the trench. When all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and said, the Lord indeed is God. The Lord indeed is God. The word of the Lord for the people of God. Let all say amen. amen. And our theme this morning, come back to the altar and let the fire fall. Come back to the altar and let the fire fall. Do you remember the old song, if you ever needed the Lord before? Yeah, yeah, sure yeah. you need him now. You need him in the morning. You need him in the noonday. You need him all day long. We used to sing that song in the kitchen. My mother, my father, my brothers and sisters, and we used to sing that song. Well, I'm here to tell you that in this society of shootings while you're sitting in your home minding your own business and trigger happy police and angry neighbors and the constant bullying of children and, and adults and the invasion of the media. I need to tell you we need the Lord. Yeah. We need to go back to the old landmark and that old landmark is prayer. Nowadays, people don't want to spend time in prayer. It is time to look around at ourselves and take inventory. With this opioid crisis, the negative media, media coverage, poor leadership in the White House, we need to learn how to wait on God in prayer. We need to know who God is, and we need to know what he can do for us. During slavery time, the slaves had a black head pot. And they prayed in that pot so the master wouldn't hear their cries and whip them for praying. But God heard that, and they survived. Yes, yes. That black kettle pot anchored them in prayer. That black kettle pot became their altar. And if we are going to survive the attacks of the enemy, we have to come back 
to idol worship. Elijah knows his God. He has his foundation already set up. But he knew that the altar was still broken and he had to rebuild it. So the great need, the great cry of today is for men and women to rebuild their altars, their heart altars, and meet with God. It is where you climb your own Mount Moriah and give up your Isaacs up to yeah, God. Yeah, yeah. It's a place of giving up and a place of consecration. To build natural altars in the Old Testament, the prophets used uncut stones. That is pure material. And the words of God says, none but the pure in heart shall see God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Elijah took 12 stones representing the 12 tribes of Israel and began to build the altar. These stones were a type and shadow of Jesus, for Jesus is the chief on the stone. He is the rock that builds the yeah, church, yeah, yeah. and we are his living stones. We have an altar in our church, and some churches don't have altars. But this morning, I'm not talking about this wooden piece of furniture. This wooden piece of furniture is symbolic of a place to come to God and bow down. This piece of wood won't save anybody. Yeah. It can't heal anybody. Yeah. It can't pick you up when you fall down. But this piece of wood changes from the natural into the supernatural when we begin to pray and call the Lord. The anointing flows from God into the wood. The anointing flows from the head on down. And the head in this place called St. Paul comes down through our act. God's anointing comes through here. And yesterday our pastor was told prophetically that he was a prayer warrior. And when some warriors get wounded, they go off someplace to die. Mm -hmm. But that is not so without pastor. Yeah. He will fight and fight and not give up until the battle is won. And he because his heart is the altar. It is here at this altar that you get your heart right with God. Yeah. It is here when you leave that pew and come to this piece of furniture that you are transformed. It is a place where we wrestle with God for a changed life. It's a place where you kneel, touch the wood, and if your heart is right, the power of the Holy Spirit will loose the chains and bring you out of bondage. The altar is where the brokenhearted finds healing. It's where the burdened down finds peace. It's where the Christian finds harm. It's where the God is labeled a yeah, yeah. And you are a new creation. Don't allow society to label you. It's a place where God turns things around. It's a place where the saints find out. No prayer, no power. Little yeah. prayer, little power. Must pray, much power. And it all comes from being at the altar. If you notice, many prophets in the Bible erected altars on their journey with God. Now, if they had to erect the altar, what about you and me? Mm. All right. The 12 stones that Elijah used to build his altar is symbolic of the number 12. And in the Bible, the number 12 represents governmental perfection. Yeah. Here we have the product of three with the divine multiplication of four, representing God's creative work. In Revelation 21-22, we talk about the 12 gates of the Holy Spirit city. We need holy gates in every opening in our city. The greatest structure we can build in America is not rebuilding new skyscrapers. It's building altars in every city, every state, every country. It's building altars in our homes, 
and in our schools and in places yeah, yeah, of higher learning. No terrorist can destroy the altar of your heart. Altars are destroyed through neglect, yeah. decay, right. rejection, lack of prayer. Mm. You see, we want things to be comfortable and less painful. My God. Second Chronicles 7.14 says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves yeah. and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. Will yeah, forgive yeah, their yeah. sin and heal their land. So many times we stop there. But if you go to verse 15 and 16, it says that his eyes will be open, God's eyes, and his ears attentive to our prayer. And he will choose this house yeah. and sanctify this house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In other words, God's stamp of approval will be on us. The anointing will be upon us. The number 12 comes up again in our text. When Elijah confronts the prophet of Baal on Mount Carmel for the true God to manifest. If Baal revealed himself by fire, the people would worship him. And if Jehovah answered by fire, then they would return to true worship. This is what happened. Elijah says, fill four large jars with water and pour it on the offering and the wood. Do it again, he said, and they did it again. Do it the third time, he ordered, and they did it again. Three times four equals 12. The 12 barrels of water in a time of drought and famine was a tremendous sacrifice. And if we really want to see a move of God, it will cost us something. Mm. If you really want something from the Lord, it will cost your time and patient work. Right. You will have to seek God and pursue Him and spend time with Him. Don't you want to spend time with the one you love? The song says, what's love got to do with it? Well, love got to do with time and patience and spending time with God and spending time with the one you love. Matthew 6.33 tells us to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto us. What things? The things you need. It means that God must be first, not your wife, not your husband, not your children. Did you hear me? Not your wife, not your husband, not your children. God should be first. And when you put God first, then your wife is right, your children are right, and you're all right with God. When God is first, you will experience the fire of God. When God is first, he will lead you and guide you. When God is first, he'll show you a way out of the confusion. When God is first, then you know what he can do for you. When God is first, hallelujah, his heart is clear on you, and you will receive all the experienced the fire of God when he invested in water. My God. Water is symbolic of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Without an investment in water, there would be no fire. Water represents the Holy Spirit. Fire represents the Holy Spirit. So you got to invest. How much time do you invest in seeking God? How much time do you invest on your face compared to how much time you spend on Facebook? Our age now is technology. We are connected to everything and anything except the real person that matters, and that's Jesus. So many people feel that they would die 
if they lost their phone or had to go without their phone for a day. And many of those same people can go days or weeks without talking to God and coming to prayer and Bible study. The point is, if we want to experience the move of God in our lives, we must spend time with God. And that time with the Lord and Savior. Ascension time came. And the prophets met on the mountaintop. Elijah was confident in his God. His faith said nothing is impossible with God. Elijah made a trench around the earth. He put the wood in order. He prepared the bullet by cutting it into pieces. He did what he had to do without question. You see, when God tells you to do a thing, you do it. You do it without asking when, why, where, how. You just do it because God says do it. And when God says do it, then God will answer. When God says do it, you just do it. He poured water on the sacrifice. Water and fire, as we know, do not coexist. Wet wood is hard to catch fire. But Elijah prayed, and that's the key. Elijah prayed, Elijah prayed, Elijah prayed, and fire fell down from heaven. The fire consumed the sacrifice. The altar, the stones of the altar were all consumed. It licked up the water in the trench, and it licked up the dust. God demonstrated his power and presence by fire. Fire not to burn us up, but to cleanse us. Fire to fill us with power. Fire as a choir saying, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, that's the Lord. And I pray that we will repair our altars and come back to the altar with great anticipation yes, and yes, expectation yes, yes. and let the fire fall on us and revive us. Renew us and restore us. There are things in our lives that need to be burned up and burned out. There are things we need the fire of God in our lives. All right. We need his fire because God is our problem solver and peacemaker. Mm -hmm. We need to come back to the altar because he's a miracle worker and our deliverer. Oh. We've got to come back to the altar because he is the forgiver of all our iniquity. We've got to come back yeah. because he is the healer of all our diseases. Yeah. Yeah. Come back. Come back to the altar because there's nothing too hard for God. Come back because yes. he's holy and yes. highly yes. exalted. He is merciful and protected. His mercies are new every morning. Come back. Come back to the altar because he's the captain of your salvation. He is altogether lovely and his name is Jesus. Let the fire fall. Let the fire fall on me, O oh God. That's your reason. Be praying. Lord, release the fire. Give me a clean heart, O oh God. Yes, yes, yes. So that I can serve you. Yes. We need Jesus. Yes, we do. We need the Son of God. We need the man that Herod couldn't kill mm -hmm. and politicians couldn't bribe. Well, the Pharisees couldn't trick him and Pilate couldn't touch him. The devil couldn't stop him. Well, the cross couldn't keep him down. Well, the grave couldn't hold him down. Right Come back to the altar because there is no sickness that God cannot heal. Yes. He's greater than all time. He's greater than all right. Yes. He's greater than Adam. He's greater than Jesus. He's greater than the president of the world. The holy fire was greater than Come on back, because by Jesus' stripes, you are here. Come back to the altar.